I'm nearing 4,000 days survived in hardcore Minecraft, which 90% of those days have been spent building to prepare for new massive projects. I need to gather tons of materials. So today I'm building 10 auto farms to make my life easier. Also for every subscriber this video gets, I'll gather 10 blocks of dirt to transform the mountains surrounding my starter base. So please subscribe. The first farm I want to build today is a new way to get string as I keep running out. Now I do already have a triple spider spawner but it's my original experience farm and requires a very long trip to get to all the way up here in our original mining base we have the spider farm that is uh, infested by glow squid really infested by glow squid this definitely needs an upgrade nope no, I hate spiders. I hate spiders. I hate this. I already regret this. Let's get some torches in here and turn off the farm. All of the farms are now disabled and I need to get rid of this water. But first, let's clear the spiders out because I don't want those coming back out of me. Much, much better now to remove all of the water and glow squads, apparently, as well as all of the fence gates. Around the walls, I want to place some water up here at the top on top of some fence gates to drown any spiders that are going to crawl up. All the fence gates are in place, and now I just need to fill this entire thing with water sources. That should do it now just to open every single one of these gates. For the cave spiders, they only need one block, so we can save a few fence gates. This should work for the second spawner. Third spawner is now done as well. I believe all the spiders can just spawn in the air around the spawner. So next, I just need them to fall to their death. So we got to dig this down about 20 blocks. I really should have set up a beacon, but the first pit is now done. Right, here we go. Pit number two and pit number three are now dug down to the same layer. Before we head out to grab any more materials, though, I need to come here into the middle and stack up some glass on top of the spawners. Just to make sure everybody who does spawn falls down. Now, I don't really need this killing chamber anymore, so we can also get rid of this. To collect the string, I need to craft some rails and powered rails, as well as three hopper minecarts. To ensure all the spooters die when reaching the bottoms, I'd like to bring some magma blocks with us. We're definitely making a better entrance to this, as currently I go down here, jump off the minecart as it continues on its way, and then we fly up here. <laughs> it's so bad. And you know, my random door that, yep, very secure entrance. Missing a few materials down here, so let's get ourselves some more hoppers. As we need a place to drop off all of our items. Hopper's right to there. Barreter looks at hopper, goes into redstone torch. Redstone torch looks into repeater, which then will power this. But if there's an item in here, it turns off. Great. With the unloading system hooked up, I need to next put down rails across the entire bottom. Then on top of all of the rails, we just need to throw in our magma blocks. Upper minecart in and it's a go. Here goes number two. And now number three with the hopper minecart. Okay, so here's two of the outputs. Where is the third? All the way over here. More redstone bits acquired. Oh, nailed it. No, 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 no. I tried looking so cool and I broke it. But next up, I need to move all the string up to the surface, which means we need a water system going all the way up to there and a way to get the items out of the hoppers into a water stream where something like this right here should work. Anytime an item goes in here, here, it should spit out. Nice. Farms two and three are so close to each other that I was able to hook them up to the same here, and that should work. Some blue ice at the end and water here. That should knock everything down to the end. This should work for bringing all the items right down this way and leading us into our water elevator that needs some water. I can just work my way up here to the top with a little bit of kelp, but realistically, I shouldn't need that much storage for it, so we can just stack up a few chests. Or you know what? Because I really don't need that much, let's just do some barrels. Run some hoppers into the back of these, and with the kelp all the way up here, that should work oh no oh no oh no 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 not working swim down to the bottom break the kelp and we shoot back up final step to get the farms working again is to remove all of the torches that should be the first one and spiders are spawning and they died perfect number two is done now as well and before we do number three i need more tinted glass i'm completely out of amethyst shards so i had to run it back over to the dwarven village to where we have all of the mines to gather up a few that right there should be plenty next we can buy a little bit of glass from our librarians and use that to craft tinted glass now this isn't super needed but i just really like to look into my farms as i think it's kind of cool so i'm filling out the middle walls with tinted glass 
And now I can watch all three spider spawners fall to their doom forever. But I probably need a way to get in and out of here pretty easily. That 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 would be nice. Our route home is going to be pretty easy as I just need to dig down to connect in with the existing tunnels I use for branch mining. And there we go. That should be home. Now if I put a powered rail here at the end and a button, that's our start stop. And then we just got to run our way all the way along with some more powered rails as we go. And we can have the really fancy stop just like right there. No, no, I was supposed to be in that. <laughs> this will take us all the way from the mining outpost over to our brand new string farm. And if I stand anywhere on these polished andesites, all three of them are active and we're getting tons of string. Farm one, done. Next up, I'm putting two simple farms in the same space for my favorite decoration items glowberries and hanging roots, which is going to require some string to craft bows and then dispensers. I also need a piece of rooted dirt and some glowberries. I want to hide this farm inside of the water mill in my city as it still doesn't have an interior and that's two birds with one dirt. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, we can create a strip of dark oak logs going all the way back here. Then I'm thinking right about here, we can have the farms. So we put rooted dirt there and glowberries here. Dispensers looking at both of those things and some observers behind. Now, if we use some levers right in front of these guys, that should get power down here over to this where you can put a sticky piston and a second observer then if i turn that on that should flick the dispenser perfect now for the other one we're going to use a repeater right here sticky piston and observer reason being is i want to do a hopper and a hopper so we can auto load bone meal from a chest right up here we can have a little access door right back in there and then i think we can just continue up our wall along this way slabs on top of the chest so we can still open it but it looks like it's part of the ceiling now to help close the space off a little bit more i think we can do a wall right over here and then we can start working on the ceiling with some dark oak slabs coming all the way across skip two blocks and do that right here too and use the fun bottom texture I want to run composters across the entire top like this, just, you know, for fun, which is starting to look pretty good. But no, this is looking even better in here. We've got a full interior and a little place to sleep off to the side. And I'm almost out of bone blocks. Oh, we'll do this many. We just load all the bone meal in the top here. Now we turn this guy on. We should be able to just break all of the rooted dirt that we want. Well, hanging roots off the rooted dirt. And I am a very happy flipper right now. And this should work for all of the glow berries we're ever going to need. Over here, we can put all of our hanging roots in. Right next to that, we have storage for the glow berries. Oh, this is going to be perfect. I can't help it. I want more much better. I'm very happy with that. Before we jump to the next farm, I need to fix up my tools, which requires a quick trip into the nether. I'm getting really good at flying down the tunnel. Whoa, look at that. Where we can head on down into the wither skeleton farm. I think the... No, there's skeletons. I think the farm broke. The piglet's gone. But that's a lot of skeletons. Okay, can I land this safely up here? and they will all fall in. That's a lot of wither skeletons. That is a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm terrified. We're going to kill all of them and then we're going to deal with this later. How did that happen? That's so sad. Oh, this farm took forever to build. Well, mostly digging the pit, but you get the idea. It took forever to get the pig in there. Now for the next farm, I need sweet berries as I want more decor blocks. And apparently I want to torment myself with luring foxes around. Down here is going to be a great spot for a vineyard. Just trust me. We just got to remove all of the trees down here first. Now, all I've done today is build farm. So before you all disappear, let's build something. People like me for more than my builds, right? Right? right yeah yeah i'm sure grabbing a few empty shulker boxes here as i'm gonna need a lot of materials for this build starting with chopping down a few spruce trees this should hopefully be plenty spruce logs and i'll be sure to replant all of the saplings i got to keep the mega taiga growing i think i actually need some coarse dirt too so we're just gonna grab that here and mossy cobble i've been really enjoying the designing aspects for builds recently and just going hard with texturing so i had to run around and grab a ton of random materials from all of my chests to make that happen today except there still are a few items i am missing which brings us to the coral reef as i want dead coral blocks A good build always starts with a large shulker monster. I want to raise this build up to sit a little bit more on the hillside over here so we can build out a small retaining wall. 
with a few slabs on top just to make it a little bit better and we'll bring some grass in front of this to take it all the way down then for an outdoor patio we can use dead coral and mud to texture the base and a few decorations added around the edge already with some sweet berries in for the house itself i want to darken this lower section by bringing in some of our stripped dark oak logs and then we can use some barrels here that'll actually be the storage for the sweet berries in the end a few trap doors hidden right up here on top of them so we can throw hoppers going all the way along the back with a small area hanging over the top of it to create a second balcony now to access this section i'm adding in an attached building using some wider blocks to contrast the main one with a big old copper gear on the back for funsies this is starting to look pretty good in here jumping back to the main building i'm going with a stone palette on the front face with my favorite addition of a bay window and then a warmer gray over on this side which we can add in a little extra decor like this. Now this is a fantasy world after all, so I'm adding in some strip work blocks here as like pipes sticking into the building. We've got a giant gear wheel, so the pipes just kind of complete the look, just like adding a giant chimney sticking high into the sky. And to make this balcony over here look a little bit more decorative, I'm thinking we can bring in a little purple and pink terracotta to add that winery vibe almost. And we can break up the roof with a window here and I'm using the verdant frog lights behind and a little warp trap doors for our shutter. To finish everything off, I'm adding in a deep slate roof, trying to keep some darker tones near the chimney to help it pop more. With that, I am extremely happy with the vineyard building. Now, before we build the vineyard itself, I need to find some fuxes to, you know, set up the berry farm. So let's grab ourselves some leads and some more rockets as we're off on an adventure. And I think I have an idea where some foxes might be i should actually grab some berries to bring with me too a long time ago when i attempted to complete all the advancements in this world we had to find some foxes to breed them and well they were in the taiga over here somewhere and there's where we killed our strider in the rain nice now where did these guys run off to nope that's a pig that's that's a pig adventure time doesn't mean i can't come home without anything but i'll find foxes at least i got more lily of the valley nighttime's coming and i realized i uh forgot my bed so sorry sheepies you had to go <gasps> I think this was the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is where it was. Please, please, foxes. Last I saw them, they were right here. It's only been like 2,000 days. They'll still be here, right? I don't think I've ever been this far north in the world, so everything out here should be brand new, and maybe we can find a snowy fox, like a white fox. That'd be amazing. But I'll settle for any fox. Any fox, please. I just found some foxes. There's a baby and an adult. Yes. And yes, we have them. Oh, this is amazing. I caught them killing some chickens. Look how cute they are i love them there's more there's more wait please please he's got an emerald what's the chance of them spawning with an emerald in their mouth <gasps> buddy i love him look at him he's so cute name ideas in the comments please look at them they're all adorable foxes leave the bunny leave it leave it no leave it no we're not gonna kill the chickens either leave the chickens no no follow me welcome to your new home oh we still got a ways to go but you know we're we're almost there here we are back in civilization population me and my furry friends watch the berries watch the oh wait you guys are immune to them <gasps> oh walk through them all you want now for the ultimate test can we get past the chicken coop just come with me. There's no... Ch don't kill the parrots. Don't kill the parrots. Don't... Okay. Okay. I got really nervous there for a second. Oh, we lost a fox. No. I lost another fox. Oh, this is awkward. This is terrible. Nope. 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 Give me that lead. We will put all of you there. And where's the last one? Oh, he got on the boat. Oh, that's great. And I believe I can give you and you a berry and we'll get another fox. And it's another white one. <gasps> I love that. Now for the actual sweet berry farm before we build the vineyard, which we can dig down here underneath the building and create space for it. Right, this is taking too long. I should have done this to begin with. Let's build a beacon. Okay, back to mining we go. This is going to be a lot faster. Down this layer, we should be able to fill it with stone bricks. Then our rails are going on top of that. Then we put our dirt here, berries, air block, and then our glass 
floor and that'll give us three blocks above perfect next up we can build an item unloading system for our minecart right like this if i can find where i put all my powered rails what the heck did i do oh they're right there i'm blind <laughs> color blindness is great we we'll put the rails down so i don't accidentally dig into it let's put our stone bricks all over i'm gonna need a lot more rails for this though first off putting in redstone blocks to power all of our rails and then adding in all of the rails to cover the floor and grass blocks on top to light this up i want to place our verdant frog lights going around the entire outer rim now after that one i need to run around and pick up out 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 as many sweet berries as i can hopefully we can get about four stacks from the bushes i have around the base oh hey here's a ton over here first trip around the starter base and we got a little over a stack wait a second here can't i just bone meal them like these decorative bushes yeah perfect there we go four full stacks now i'm not sure if i still need to do this or not but you used to have to put an armor stand down here for an entity to be nearby for foxes to keep working so we'll put it in just to be safe but for now we just throw in the rest of the berries there we go all placed in with one extra now since i'm gonna be able to see inside this thing i kind of want to decorate it so along the walls here we can fill this all in with our jungle planks which looks much better and for a final step white glass along the top with the box completed i set up the item elevator to move the berries up into the barrels last thing i still need to do is come in here and place a redstone block and a piston to move that glass block down in place and now I need to get some foxes in here. Why is it just the middle berries haven't grown? Everything on the outside of the trunk has, except these in the middle. Ooh, spooky. I don't know. Let's move some foxes. I really want to keep the one that has the emerald in its mouth up here. So which is that? No, it's you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get you, hook you back up, and then I'm grabbing all of these. And who wants a berry instead of a lead? Okay. There's two of them. Do you want a berry? Yeah, you want a berry. You're snoozling. We'll get you in a minute. You can snoozle. Have your berry for when you wake up. These foxes are driving me crazy. I keep losing them. Get down here, everybody. Give me those leads back. Give. Thank you. Don't have to throw them all over the floor. Right. If I let you loose, will you just go down with the berries? There's one in. There goes number two. And number three is in. Perfect. Snoozle fox, you can just hang out up here. Thank you for the lead back. Enjoy your berry. You keep the emerald. And look at that. We have our first berries coming in. They're already working. I hung around in the area to decorate the entrance a little bit here so we can get down to the foxes. And in the meantime, we now have almost four stacks of sweet berries. I got to the start on the vineyard itself down here where I'm working on a coarse dirt road to kind of connect over to the river and the other fields. And then from here, I just need to fill in dirt around the entire way. little double dirt action and the valley is ready for berries which we can pick up from our lovely barrel and that's a lot of them i like this farm here i want to border the road by just creating these large lines of our berries going up into the hill fun little building tip here is if you're trying to make a vineyard of sorts having it on a slope is actually the more realistic way to do it because they want to make the vines really work for it because apparently it makes better tasting fruit for all of the wine and stuff there's your random building tip of the day and with this i think the spruce leaf can actually match in pretty well as being just a random darker one so we can dot a few of those in here we're not gonna be harvesting this because we have the auto farm that's producing more than i'm ever gonna need back to my favorite minecraft activity planting in a field for the vineyard to just complete the cozy vibes It feels a little all over the place though. So I'm thinking as our last step here, I want to bring in a stone wall of sorts, just kind of blocking this area off from everything else going on. Probably more so on this side. I want to add in some custom trees in here soon, but we'll have to get to that later as we still have a lot of farms to build. But this, this looks really good. Oh, I love it. Just look at the vibes. Oh, I love it so much. Okay. I bet you thought that was today's field, huh? Nope. That was a bonus field. Now for the real hardcore episode field, the one where every video I ask you to subscribe to my channel and leave a like on the episode. Wait, that's a bonus ask for the second field, so it's fine. But if you enjoy my content, any support you can show really does help me out here on the platform. And I'm extremely thankful to have such an awesome community here. So thank you for being you and keep at it. Just like I'll keep at making more fields in this hardcore world as long as I can. I had to come all the way over here to the mud castle. I'm just kind of starting to run out of space. Two fields in one episode. You are all lucky today. Let's dive down into the nether cave for the next farm.
As I need gunpowder. My gas farm is currently broken and I'm slowly running out of supplies. I need to replace the entire middle line of each cobblestone row with a light source block. For this, I want to use frog lights since I can grab them down here, where we can use pearlescent frog lights and ochre frog lights. Ochre, ochre, I don't know. Alternating layer by layer as I don't have enough of each individual one to fill it all in with one type of frog light and I want to get this done now. So a decision had to be made with what I had available. As I did make the largest possible gas farm at the time, so this took well over an hour to replace everything. But now if I fly all the way up here, the gas farm is working great. I've already built out a string farm, two micro farms for hanging roots and glow berries, a fox powered sweet berry vineyard, and now finally the gas farm is fixed. Now, what is a block you never use in Minecraft? For me, it's uh, dried kelp blocks. I just kind of forgot they existed, to be honest. Next, we're changing that by building an auto kelp farm. You know what? I do have this open storage building here we could use. It's very finished. But first, I need to dig down underground and clear out a space for the kelp to grow. I'm going to use a lot of cobble in this build, so let's grab our fortune pick. And to get to work on clearing out the space underneath. I just zoned out and got digging, so I guess this is how big the kelp farm's gonna be. Huh. Which means I'm gonna need tons of pistons, observers, and sea lanterns. Now, this farm is pretty simple. It just requires a row of blocks on the base, pistons on top of those, a row of blocks behind the pistons, redstone dust on top of that, and observers looking forwards. Stacked up as many times as I can till the top. Now I need to flood this space for kelp to be able to grow. We run some dirt all the way along here. I can just fill this in with a water source and let it cascade down. Where hopefully this is gonna work and it's gonna fire the pistons a lot. It's gonna fire them a ton. I think this might work though. Yeah. Back at the base real quick, I can grab some kelp out of here and start placing that in on top of all of the observers. And we have kelp farm, but I need a dried kelp farm, which can start with signs going all the way along here. Already kelp is making it to the bottom. Okay, this is gonna produce a lot of stuff. I need to move the kelp into a smelter to create dried kelp. So here we have a water system going into an elevator where we can use kelp to create it. And that'll take it all to the top to right here. Let's start with two double chests here of regular kelp just to have it in case I want it. And then we can run six smokers to smelt everything that are gonna go into their own sets of double chests. This system is going to really easily overflow. So do we got, oh yeah, maybe that goes right there. So just to be safe, let's add some fire here at the end to burn any excess items. These are going to very quickly run out of fuel. So they're all going to need their own supplies, which we can just do some barrels from behind. Eventually we can use the kelp blocks themselves as a fuel source. But for now we can grab all the coal from here and stone swords. So many stone swords. We can throw a few stacks of coal in each barrel. That should be enough fuel for now. And this should work for the fully automatic dried kelp farm some extra storage around for when we get more of the blocks and a little cart outside that's covered to keep the kelp dry while it's being transported and there we go another building in the city finished out i think we can all agree mangrove wood is great gathering mangrove logs not so great. So we're building Kangarooks Mangrove Tree Farm. And I want it in the city right down here. So once again, I need to dig out a hole to fit this farm inside so it doesn't look awful in the city. He's too ready to go and let's get to work. And the hole just needs to be about this big. And I gotta go down like uh, 30 blocks. Yay! Now I could definitely just build the farm off of the distance somewhere to keep it out of sight as it'd be sticking out like a sore thumb in this world. But in an effort to build a connected world, I also want the redstone farms I build to be connected to things and hidden inside of the world I am creating. This gives me a reason to actually walk around and see my builds when I need to access the farms underneath them. Here we have the pit and why, 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 why do I do this to myself? Look at all these blocks, so many blocks and two very dead pickaxes. As a plus, though it is right next to the copper factory so copper can age while i gather mangrove logs with the pit completed i do need to fill it up with the mangrove tree farm now so we don't just stare at this thing i spent an hour clearing out so instead i set off to gather a ton of different materials to bring this thing together only two items left to pick on up first i need some powdered snow which we can grab up here then i need a stack 
of blaze powder, eight stacks of obsidian, and a trip to the end. Out to the end render to grab a little experience and repair up the tools. But at the same time, I need the pearls to craft eyes of ender, which we can use to craft a stack of ender chests. With that done, I'm really trying to learn how to understand redstone, but man, this one is breaking my brain. So I couldn't even formulate a sentence while following along with the tutorial. So this time lapse will just make me look really professional while I actually build up the farm. And then this mess up top that I definitely haven't rebuilt twice now. But I do have a diving board that is supposed to be for TNT. So I'm really hoping this doesn't blow everything up. Oh no that dirt's not supposed to be there just a quick another bucket of powdered snow right here i am so terrified of this let's try this again does that do it and i think it worked i think it worked that's a lot of exploding tnt number one slight problem here as i only have that much bone meal left i don't think i've run the moss farm for bone meal since i got the wither skelly farm but that that can get us started that can get us started we can throw that all inside here and we're definitely gonna need more to run the farm for longer. Now for the true test. Does it turn on and do things? It looks like it's doing. Oh, it's trying. Oh. Things, explosions, and it's doing it again. Okay, now I just look right here. And we have a mangrove tree, look at that. Oh, I love this. Now I just sit here. This would be great. I really try not to AFK in this world, but unfortunately some farms do require the player to be involved. So I sat around for about 30 minutes watching as mangrove trees blew up in front of me. I prefer to get as much done as possible in as few days as possible instead of bloat the day count with AFK time, you know? But this year is gonna be so nice for building. Just like the building over the top. Hey, look, distraction! I need mangrove propagules to run the farm, but I'm all out now. And to get those, I need bone meal. So let's dive into the nether and fix the wither skeleton farm. Please don't make it worse. Well, first and foremost, unfortunately, my pig disappeared. So we need a new one from over there. Well, first and foremost, I need to get the guy in here. He'll stand on top of the trap door. We open it and he will fall down there. We name tag him and go. So let's take a ton of stone slabs and work out to the far side. Out on the far side, I need to find a piglin carrying a sword, not a skeleton with a bow. Preferably a live piglin with a sword and definitely not a baby piggy. Oh, piglin. Ah, he's got a bow. Oh, I'm so quick. Nobody can get me. Piglin, you have a bow. There's one. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, buddy. Come with me. All the way over here. Keep up, please. No, no, no. Me, 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 me. Oh, you're scared of him. I'll get rid of him for you. Right. Here's the piglin. And down here is my stone platform. Hey, maybe he needs a staircase to get down. No, 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 no. <sighs> Stupid pig. Not the time, guess. Okay. He missed. Come on. Come with me. Can you walk on slabs? No, 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 buddy. Buddy, no, buddy, no, buddy, no. He can walk on slabs. Yep, he's coming. No, he ran into the... Oh, you're so... Oh. <laughs> I hate piglins. New piglin is in tow. Right, here we go into the middle yet again, and this time I've got guardrails and a lot of wither skeletons. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of all of these. If I name tag you, break... Oh, no, he's going to be able to get out. Sorry, we're doing very important things right now. Can't have any wither skeletons. Thank you. Now, if I open this, you should just fall directly onto the platform and he's in. Yes. Okay. And I should be able to put the glass back in there and a little button on top to spawn proof it. And I think that's everything. Now, I think this is what killed the pig the first time is they jumped on top of these walls by getting pushed and then they could get up there. So we're just going to add some extra walls. How did you just spawn over there? How did you, how did you just... This is... You, what? Right, wither skeletons are spawning and they just safely fell down to the bottom. So let's get rid of this platform for now, all the way back to here, just in case I need another one. Now that the farm is up and operational, we can still slightly improve it. Nope, 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 look at the pig. The original nether fortress had walkways leading off from this cross section. So I can add in some netherite going five blocks out and the wither skellies will still aggro on the piggy in the middle. This year should work for the first and I have two more to do. Unfortunately, the fourth side was at the end of the fortress. So there's no additional spawning spaces to move into, but these three additions should help, which it looks like they already are. Finally, I want to also remove the TNT machine over here. 
It's only been about six months, but it feels great to have this gone. Now, after that gas spawned all the way up there, I installed mini HUD to see if the perimeter needed some work. And well, um, this big red sphere here, that's everything that can spawn mobs right now. So, oh no. I need to run around and remove all of the blocks inside of the sphere to hopefully improve the rates even more. Well, this is a lucky find. Two ancient debris, I forgot. I'll take those. Oh wait, there's a third. I know it's not 100% vanilla, but I did spend over 200 hours clearing this place out originally. So I think it's fair to save the extra hour not doing the math on what I missed. And there we go. The entire wither skelly perimeter is clear. I just need so many bone blocks. Doggos are going to take over now, but check that out. That is going to do nicely. Time to go look at the nice blue sky in Minecraft. I'm feeling very done with the nether today. With the bone meal acquired, I can build up the propagule farm now, so I got all the materials I need together. This is really similar to my glow lichen farm. I just need as many dispensers as possible, looking at the mangrove leaf to make the propagules grow super fast. I'm just gonna hide it underneath the street of the industrial district near the mangrove farm and uh we'll turn it into a basement soon but for now we can take nine stacks of bone meal and add that to each of our dispensers and make magic happen yep magic happening magic very much happening oh my gosh it's so loud <gasps> it's leaking that might help i don't know we'll see no, it didn't help at all. Actually, I think it made it worse. Less than a minute later, and we already almost have four stacks, and there's a glass pane in there. Moving on, as one of my favorite blocks in Minecraft is the mushroom stem. Except it's really difficult to farm in bulk. So I want to build a mushroom tree nursery to grow the big boys. And I'm thinking right over here is gonna do great. Mushrooms can be planted on podzol in any light where otherwise it needs complete darkness. But we can grow that up here and they grow three blocks out in every direction. But from there, I should be able to plant another big one and they're nearly connected. But I could go five blocks and it still works. They just overhang. <gasps> Perfect. Still, this means I need to clear out a large amount of trees here on the far side of spawn to make space for our mushroom trees. I want to fit as many mushroom trees in here as possible. So taking fossil, I started with a grid spread out by five blocks each. This is currently 18 mushroom growing points right now. So let's try and fit in a few. No, we're going to get really close over here. Okay, we'll go for 22 of them. Using string from the spider farm, I crafted up 22 dispensers here that we can use to automatically bone meal all of our mushrooms. Now I just need to dig around underground to find them all. Oh, oh no. From here, I want to use a redstone clock. So if we activate that, that'll come down here. Repeater powers that block. Then we go into another repeater that'll power this block and we can loop that around for a clock. Now, underneath every single one of our dispensers, I added in a redstone torch. So we can actually do that and that'll activate it straight away. So now I just need to snake some redstone lines all the way around. I should probably light this up down here as it's uh, turning into a bit of a rave, but that should be everything hooked up. <laughs> I just hope it turns off. Oh, it's very dark outside. That right there should turn everything off. Yes, yes, it's gonna work. Now I need to load every dispenser here with a little bit of bone meal. I'm thinking three stacks in each is going to do the trick. And there we go. With a flick of the lever, this should grow every single one of the trees. Yes. Yes, we're getting there. They might be a little too close together, but you know, that's a that's a pretty good start. That's a that's a pretty good start. I'm going to run out of brown mushrooms real quick, so I need a fortune three axe to get some more. We can buy a new one here. Now, for the first time in a very long time, I took the enchant off and let's see if we can just roll fortune. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll, we'll start there. We'll buy a book. We can pick up a new mending book an efficiency four and fortune three. Oh, goodbye, Anvil. <laughs> Efficiency five and mending. Lastly, we can take one of our netherite ingots and upgrade this to a new netherite axe. I almost said pickaxe. It's an axe. Using the fortune axe on all of our brown mushrooms and then silk touching our way down the stems. We can just place that back. Looks like every harvest is going to give a little over four and a quarter stacks and over a stack of mushroom stems at this rate. We can also get our brown mushroom blocks as they all grow back. Please grow. Please grow. Please grow. Oh, we're wasting so... Okay. Flip redstone. Yay. Flip redstone. Yay. Right? Right? 
Yeah, it's great. With this though, I should be able to just go around and gather up all these mushrooms, which I'm doing for the blocks this time. With all those cleared out, I should be able to just do this and then all of these trees will grow. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Oh, I love my farm. Yeah, look how many blocks I got. This is honestly really good. Look at that stem. That's a nice stem. There we go, 10 new farms ready to go in the hardcore world. Now time for a deep pit of Minecraft grinding for the next build. Leave a like and subscribe so I have to gather even more dirt and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.